I think I've finally cemented my reputation as the guy who plays mercenary games. Today I've got a very interesting game for you guys. It is a story about intrigue, espionage, sabotage, and a cast of unique and quirky mercenaries on a quest to save the world. And get paid to do it, of course. This is the Lamplighters League, a game set in the alternate 1930s where a tyrannical and powerful group called the Banished Court is working on a project that can literally reshape the world as they see fit. But they are being opposed by a man who goes by the name of Locke. He is the leader of what remains of a group called the Lamplighters League, who intends to stop the Banished Court. One small issue though, almost all of its members are dead. So Mr. Locke is on a quest to gather mercenaries from across the world and send them on missions to stop the Banished Court's progress in an awesome mix of real-time infiltration and turn-based tactical combat. So today we will be trying out the Lamplighters League in this video that is graciously sponsored by our friends over at Paradox Games. Games. So here we are at our hideout with our employer, Mr. Locke. So how the game is played is that each week, the game is played in weeks, each week you have a preparation phase where you're at your hideout and you have access to upgrading your agents, choosing their uh, arsenal, their items, stuff like that. You also have access to your allies who upgrade your arsenal and your skills and the stuff that you have access to. There's also a supplier where you can buy items that you're going to use on your mission. You can buy armor, weapon modifications, stuff like that. And of course you have these resources here that you have to manage. The supplies you can spend on uh, buying stuff. Intelligence gives you access to missions. You can't do missions if you don't have intelligence on them. There's healing, self-explanatory. This is the used in upgrading your gear at the gunsmith. SP is the uh, points that you spend to better your agent's capabilities and skills and stuff like that. Ink is used on the undrawn hand, a really cool system uh, where you have cards that affect agent's passives and stuff like that. And the last two resources I've never found, so I don't know what they do. We'll keep that a mystery for you to uh, uncover. So let's meet the cast that we have so far. I've only got four agents so far that I've been able to like rescue and hire and stuff like that. But there's a lot of uh, agents from what I've seen. So we've got Ingrid, who's like a, a melee based brawler and the uh, her playstyle is basically the more you kill the more you can do so you get like refunded your your uh, action points if you're if you land like the killing blow on someone then we've got latif the gentleman jinn latif means gentle in arabic by the way a little piece of lore he's basically like a sneaky thief a uh, very slippery kind of guy that you can't really pin down. So he's really good at misdirecting fire during firefights. Then we've got Eddie, the MVP. This guy is literally Big Iron personified. He's a great war veteran turned bank robber with a knack for evening uneven odds. Hmm, yeah, he's pretty good. Eddie's really, really cool. Eddie can hit up like up to five people in one turn. Like he's got the potential to kill so many on his turn. Then we've got Celestine, she's like an, an assassin occultist type character. She basically has access to uh, skills that affect your opponent's stress level. So she can stress out people, she can manipulate people, stuff like that. So her playstyle is pretty unique. She's also not a mercenary, the other three are mercenaries, they're just hired on this journey. Celestine actually like has inside info and has worked with Locke before, like she knows who the Banished Court are, she knows about the Lamplighters League. So. After your preparation phase is done, you go on the world map and you can choose from missions that you have like planned and have popped up, uh, missions you have intelligence on, and you basically spend that intelligence to go on those missions. Right now I only have one mission because I've done a lot of preparation to do this really critical mission, which is to recover a keystone. In the past few missions, I've been uh, rescuing agents, I've been sabotaging the the banished courts uh, schemes and stuff like that. And I wanted to show you guys the Keystone Recovery mission because it is a critical mission, so it's a big deal, right? Retrieve a Keystone from Lord, Lord Strom's faction of the banished court. Over 6,000 years ago, the tower vanished. Now, the only traces of its existence are artifacts known as keystones. This is a critical mission. So we can't fail this one. We, we, we have no choice but to pull through on this one. I unironically can't wait to like hire all the agents just so I can see them like hanging out in the hideout every week. And what I like about the game as well is that 
the game is not afraid to just give you a game over. It's not unlocked yet, but once this mission is done and the banished court like catches on that you're trying to sabotage it, it's a race against time. They're basically doing their own missions while you're doing yours. And if they progress too much, if you get like three bars, which with each like Lord of the Banished Court's uh, progress, and if one of them finishes their projects, boom, that's it. They, they get access to the tower and they can just reshape existence as they want and you've lost. Game over. I love games that are not afraid to give you a straight up, bruh, nah, you failed. You weren't fast enough. And that gives you like... And that puts in like the, the depth in, in your tactics and your strategy. You have to strategize on what do you need to, to sabotage, which missions are a priority. You have all the choice, but you gotta make the right choice, you know? So let's go to the supplier. Uh, I really like uh, fire bombs, so I'm gonna buy one. And I'll give it to... who's missing? You can take it. Boom. Bandages. You know what? We don't, we don't need no bandages. We don't need no bandages. Give me that. You're not gonna get shot by something that is not alive, right? So just give me some grenades. Yeah, okay, so we're yeah, we're pretty we're pretty decked out right now. And yeah, without further ado, let's just go retrieve that keystone. Here we are. Locke said the keystone would be just up ahead. It is. I can sense it. Oh good. She can sense it. Lay off! <laughs> Maybe she can. <laughs> I was about to make fun of, of her for that, and then Latif the Jinn <laughs> said that on his own. So the way that the game plays is that you have your uh, agents, right? And you can move them like this in real time, and you can like sneak around, stuff like that. And each, uh, in, in this like phase, each uh, character has their own like advantages and disadvantages. So for example, Latif, if you ungroup him from the group, you tell them to stay behind. And he's moving around. He's really sneaky and hard to detect for the, the enemy. So it's a good idea to send Latif ahead. Just to like scout and stuff like that. Also if he's like hugging a wall. Unless someone is standing right next to him. They can't see him. And then once you want to start combat. You just press control. And it basically turns into a turn based tactical. Like XCOM like war of attrition kind of game you know. But yeah we won't do that yet. We want to, to scout for a bit with Mr. Jin. So we got four over there, we've got the keystone over there, we've got these two melee characters over here. It would be perfect if we can like get the drop on them with a bomb or something. The more you can like soften them up initially before you ha having to fight them, the better. Always fight on your own terms, you know? Yeah, we've got some more people over here. And here we will use uh, Latif's signature ability, which is to backstab people. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. Oh, intel, very nice. You should always scout, uh, especially for intel, because intel is what allows you to go on missions. We've got some... Aw, oh, there, there were so many grenades and stuff in this level, I shouldn't have bought that one Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Alright, let's set up the boys. We don't need to fight that group over there. We got everything we, we want from there. Okay, this is really good. There's uh, three people right next to an explosive barrel. I think that's as good as it gets, right? Here it goes. Oof! <laughs> we can finish these guys off right now. Let's do it. With Ingrid. Boom! She recovered one action point, as I explained before. Get that guy as well. She recovered an extra AP point. And we'll just hide back where uh, in cover. Mr. Eddie is going to give us a nice and cool overwatch over there and Latif can also give us an overwatch boom nice I'm gonna try to stab and poison this character right here with Celestine oh that was a critical hit okay we didn't need the poison to go off even with Latif every time you can like move and then shoot it's better for you because Latif uh, it puts on himself like a automatic evade if he does move within his turn before uh, like committing an action. So let's place him over here where he can only be shot because the melee character can't reach him. So the only next shot, evade is basically like you're guaranteed to, to evade at least one shot from the next move. 
the only person who can shoot him is the ranged character because the melee character can't reach him. So if he has one evade, I'm pretty sure he's pretty safe for the next turn and then we shoot from here. Boom! Nice critical shot. We're getting pretty lucky with these crits. And then Eddie will take his place because that is full cover and a bit closer. And then we'll do a bop up. Just shoot the same character twice. Get rid of him. He missed! Oh man, come on, Eddie. I have I hyped him up so much. <laughs> and uh, he misses. Oh, he just smoked us. I don't think that's gonna help you that much, man. You're dead. And you're dead. And the killing blow. Very nice. Did they drop any good loot? There's some lore here. Here you go. Read it if you want. A frag grenade. Another frag grenade. Who used the frag grenade? Was it Celestine? Alright, here you go. What is this? Brittle bones, yellow with age, lie in a heap on the ground. The skull is unmistakably human. There's the keystone. Inspect, what is this? The lid of this box has been disturbed. Inside it is a pile of red sand that glints in dim harbor lights like thousands of tiny jewels. Hmm, okay. Tower Keystone. Well... What the hell? They got 10 armor? Bruh! One thing about Lamplighter's League, you do not need to take on every fight. So, what are we gonna do? Is we're gonna use Latif's ability, Decoy. Latif sets a 170 HP decoy in a cloud of smoke, becomes invisible, and moves to a selected location. Nearby enemies attack the decoy for two rounds or until it destroyed. So we're gonna do that and just try to run to the exit. The exit is in the top right area, so let's just book it out of here with that. Just another day for the gentleman Jin. <laughs> yeah, they're just fighting the decoy. <laughs> Damn, they hurt, man. They got the decoy already? My god. In that case, I guess we fight. Ignited? Alright, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use Celestine's uh, ability, Mesmerize. That way, we can control this character for, for a turn. And hopefully that'll uh, at least like delay the other mummy a bit. There we go, Mesmerize. Go fight the other mummies. Nice. There we go. <laughs> My god. What is going on? Is it still mesmerized? I think it is. So can we... No, it's stressed out. How can you stress out a mummy? Never mind. There's the intel. And I think this second win, yeah. This reloads like our signature abilities for our characters. They're still fighting over there. What's going on? Why are the mummies still fighting each other? I thought the mesmerize just lasts for one turn. The mummies just got mad and confused because they were like, where did they go? And they started hitting each other. That's what happened. So when human enemies get their morale broken or like they get too stressed out, they try to run. They just run. They drop everything they're doing and they run away. But when you stress out, like supernatural beings, they just enter into a rage and start attacking whatever is next to them. I remember now! Okay, okay, so what I said is kind of true that they did get like confused and mad <laughs> and they started hitting each other. Alright, let's get Eddie to do light him up. This guy in front in the front is dead to a melee attack from uh, Ingrid, so we'll let her do that. Boom, 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 big iron! And that ability flushes out people from like cover. Here, you'll see that they, they got marked and now they have to move out of cover. You see that? And now we can do a dual shot on that guy. Oh, I ran out of ammo, of course. And now we've set up Ingrid for a really cool double kill. Look at this. She can go here. Boom. Replenish the 1 AP that she just spent to get there. Boom. We get the 1 AP back. She still has 2 AP. As if she hasn't... Uh basically acted this turn then if we shoot this person right here we can set her up for another kill wait maybe i can set her up for even another kill if i do this on that guy look boom she hasn't recovered her ap anymore ah i think it only happens twice per per turn so we'll do this we'll basically do a stick and move it's which basically lets you attack then run after Boom. Let's go right here. At least we'll hide from like the ranged character by doing that. 
You want to know the best part is that by attacking each other now, they're constantly breaking each other's morale with the stress. <laughs> yeah, so these two are broken right now. They'll just keep fighting until they're dead. Oh, that was stupid of you, Mr. Sniper. Oh! <laughs> Boom. All right, let's go take care of those mummies. All right, let's see if we can finish them off. All right, we just need a shot now. From Gentleman Jin. The Gentleman Jin has killed a mummy, ladies and gentlemen. Is that mummy just straight up a friend now? Did we break this mummy into becoming a friend and ally? I think we have. Oh my god, he just wants to be put out of his misery, boys. I don't think he even wants to attack us. He just wants us to... He didn't go into this expecting to get feels, man. Mr. Mummy, I... What can I say? Your wish is my command. Let's put him out of his misery, boys. The banished court won't enslave you no more, friend. This is supposed to be a hard stage. We unironically just cleared it with no casualties, no damage, no nothing. What the hell? Some supplies over here. Uh, we don't have a key, but as I said before, Eddie, the saboteur, can just lockpick. And I think that's pretty much it. We've pretty much stolen everything, we gotten everything. And uh, let's call it a mission. That was perfect. That went flawlessly, man. We've gained six skill points that we can assign as we please. By the way, you don't need to take out an agent for them to use the skill points. Someone can sit at home at the hideout and others do the missions, gather the skill points, and you can give them to them anyway. We can now carry two undrawn hand cards for a, a character. We got the Blacksmith and the Fallen. Let's see what they do. The Fallen is a ranged ability, deals damage that ignores armor accurate at medium range. And the Blacksmith, target teammates next attack deals so we buff a teammate and we deal 50% more damage on that Celestine so she can buff Eddie on her turn and the Fallen is a ranged ability we give it to Ingrid to kind of compensate for her lack, lack of a ranged attack. So now as you can see uh, after obtaining the first keystone and getting the banished court's uh, uh, attention now, each one of the lords, we got Nicastro, Marto, Strom, Marto is hammer in French, by the way. So now we are getting missions uh, that are like directly tied to the progress of each lord. So as you can see, Strom has some progress right there. And the more that the progress bar fills, the stronger that lord gets so that his missions or her missions get even uh, harder to complete. So it's very, very, very important that you keep them manageable. And as you can see here, each activity that you can sabotage has like a progress thing associated with it. That progress, if you don't do that mission or you fail it, will get added to this progress right here. But if you sabotage it, they'll lose that much progress. So it's very important that you pick the correct missions to stop them. Because if this meter fills all the way up, that Lord has finished their quest and now has those otherworldly powers to reshape the world as they want. So right here, I would go for this mission right here to just completely negate the progress there. What's, what mission is that anywhere? Sabotage. Destroy a radio tower. Yeah, there you go. You also get access to these like small activities on the side. This one, so dig around the region for potential new recruits to Locke's cause. This is in my country, actually. It costs one intel, as you can see. I told you that intel is used to go on missions. So this one... This one doesn't use the map. Yeah, so intel is important for these ones. Yeah, side missions, You can, which cost intel. And this will help you recruit more agents and more allies and stuff like that. Again, I really, really, really love that it's like a, a race against time and you've got the decision to stop this mission over there, stop this one over there. And if you get a game over, you know that it was completely your fault. I just love games that do that, man. So yeah, that was uh, the Lamplighters League. Very, very interesting game. I really like the, like the gameplay mechanics and the ideas that uh, Paradox has put into this. The setting is very cool, very unique. Reminds me of a lot of uh, cartoons and movies that I used to watch when I was a kid that made me want to be an archaeologist when I was a kid, but here we are now. The closest I'll get to being an archaeologist is being sponsored to play games like these. The characters are very, very interesting, and I like how each one of them has like their unique personalities that play into their own 
um, gameplay mechanics and uh, stuff like that. Really excited to unlock all the other agents and see what they're all about. You can actually see some of the other agents here in the main menu. We'll just wait for more transitions to happen so I can show you. That's Ingrid, Latif, Eddie and Ingrid, Celestine. There you go, that's a new character, you see him? That's a new character, you see him? That one as well. Yeah, so there's like a, a whole variety of them that you can play as. So yeah, that, really excited to see what, what else this game got. If you like what you saw in this video and want to check it out, you'll find the link in the description to get the Lamplighters League. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Bye-bye.